Originated in 4th century BC, China, the game of Go is probably the most ancient board game played by humans worldwide. The objective is to simply occupy or surround a larger territory on the board. Sounds simple? Let's see. This tiny number that you see is the number of possible board configurations for the game, which is more than the number of atoms in the universe. Often requiring intuition and creative thinking, Go was considered to be a challenge in artificial intelligence. DeepMind shocked the world when their AlphaGo algorithm defeated Go champion Lee Sedol 4-1. to Today we, as a part of the Stanford Scholar Initiative, will try to fathom the machinery of AlphaGo with the paper Mastering the Game of Go with Deep Neural Networks and Research. Let's first take a look at previous Go programs and their approaches. It all begin with search trees, which represent all possible states of play. The AI picks the best possible move at any given state. As exhaustive search is not possible for Go, approaches were developed to reduce the effective search space. The idea is to replace the subtree below a node with an evaluation function, which outputs a single value summarizing its subtree. Further, the breadth of the search can be reduced by considering only the most probable moves. In spite of these optimizations, computer performance was hardly amateur. Monte Carlo search trees or MCTS turned the tables for AI. The idea is to run many game simulations with random moves for both the players. Using the outcome of these games, the randomness, also called the action value, is reduced in the successive simulation over time converging to an optimal play. Fugo and Pachi were the strongest open source programs and Zen and Crazy Stone were the strongest commercial programs to have utilized MCTS. Even with MCTS in its arsenal, they could only manage to reach amateur DAN level. However, by a novel combination of deep neural networks and tree search, AlphaGo is able to reach expert levels of play. Let's see how. In a nutshell, AlphaGo uses neural networks to guide the tree search operation. In total, four networks are trained. A small and fast rollout policy network, two deep policy networks used for selecting moves, and finally a value network used to evaluate board positions. A policy network takes the current state of the game as input and outputs the probability of winning the game for every legal move. Others use two levels of policy networks. In the first level, a policy network is trained upon a database of expert human games. Using stochastic gradient ascent to maximize the probability of human move A selected in the state S. The SL policy network flaunts an accuracy of 57% of correctly predicting a human move. An RL policy network is then built upon an SL policy network using a large number of self-play games as training data set. This excellent trick allows the system to improve itself without the need for a set of games played by humans. As a result, a trained RL policy network won more than 85% of games against the Go program Pashi. The VN predicts the likelihood of a win based on the current board state. A VN is trained to approximate the value function of the RL policy network. Training is done by minimizing the MSC between the predicted value and the actual outcome. Training on this data set led to MSCs of 0.226 and 0.234 on the training and test set respectively, indicating minimal overfitting. Now let's see how these networks fit and improve the MCTS algorithm. A move in MCTS simulation is made by maximizing the action value plus a bonus which ensures exploration of different routes during the simulations. Every leaf is evaluated using a mixture of the output of value network and the result of fast policy network. This is a key step that suggests a blend of intuition and reflection in the AlphaGo program. Finally, the action and bonus values at all the edges are updated. After several simulations, we get an optimal play. Next up, let's look at how AlphaGo failed in a tournament against different other Go programs. The figure suggests that AlphaGo is simply many damn stronger than other Go programs. 
winning around 99.8% of the games. The distributed AlphaGo is even stronger, beating a human professional Go player 5-0. By achieving a feat that was believed to be at least a decade away, AlphaGo has opened many doors towards achieving artificial superintelligence. The question that remains is not if it is possible, but when it will be possible. With this note, we come to the end of the presentation. If you would like to view more of our talks, visit scholar.stanford.edu. Thank you.